Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargard.com and in this video we are going to answer some frequently asked questions with pivot tables in Excel. Now question number one is when I get asked how to change the layout of a pivot table. So the default pivot table layout is this compact form where we have a subtotal header directly above the next level item, which in this example is our sales rep. And people would like them in separate columns. Now to do that, I can click somewhere in my pivot table and up on the ribbon, go to the design tab where we have a report layout button. And we have some different options in here. So the compact form, the first option is what we have. But then we have outline and the one that people are normally most interested in, tabular. And if I choose tabular form, it separates the category that I have and the sales rep into separate columns and then has a separate row for the subtotal. Now, if you're doing something like that, a next logical step is to go back to the report layout button and to repeat all item labels. So it will then repeat those categories down each row in line with our sales reps. And that is how we can look at some of the different layouts of our pivot table, especially this tabular layout. Now, a natural next question is to think what default settings we can change about the pivot table. Because if the compact form is the default, can I change that? And yes, there are some quite useful default settings that we might be interested in. So if we click on the file tab and come down to options, and then from here, if we come to the data category on the left hand side, the very first button here is to edit the default layout. We can make changes to the default layout of our pivot tables. If we give it a click, there's a few interesting settings in here. So we have the option of whether we like our subtotals at the top of the group, at the bottom of the group or not at all. That's interesting. We also have whether we want our grand totals or not. And here's the one from the previous question, compact form. We could change that to say that tabular form is the preference. That's what we want as our default option. And we could then tick the box to repeat all item labels, if that's what you wanted. So there's some really interesting default settings there. Now, another thing to notice in this window is the pivot table options button. Because if we click on here, we can look at changing default settings with the pivot table options too. And there's some really good stuff in here, such as what to show instead of error values. I could say that by default, instead of an error, to display a zero. But then possibly the most common setting to change in here will be on the data tab, where we have the option to refresh data when opening the file. And if I tick the box here, this will become the default and I won't have to turn that on every time I create pivot tables in the future. It will now be the standard thing, along with the tabular layout and the position of the subtotals from this screen and anything else that we change. If at any point you're not happy with your changes and you want to revert back, we have the reset to Excel default button in here, so that is easily done. For now, I'm going to click OK, 
and OK to make those changes and they will now be applied as our default settings. Now for the third and final frequently asked questions with pivot tables is can we apply conditional formatting to them? And yes, of course we can, but there are a couple of things to bear in mind. So let's look at a couple of examples here. If I clicked on a cell in my pivot table, came to conditional formatting on the home tab, and maybe applied a color scale. Let's go for the first one here. Now that's only going to apply it to the cell or cells I had selected. But I get this tiny icon in the corner. And if I click on that, I have options as to what I apply it to. So it's applied to the selected cells. But what I want is all cells showing the total sales values for product category and order date. I don't want the second one, I want the third one because that would apply itself to this range and ignore the grand totals. It was important I ignored the grand totals because they would greatly distort the scales here. And now we can see in the green where the sales were at their best and in the red, especially November there, where they were at their worst. So that is some color scales in action. But let me undo those steps and look at another example because I selected one cell there. What about if I selected all those values in advance, avoiding the grand totals? That would save me doing that little icon. So if I came to conditional formatting, let's look at something a bit different. Highlight cells rules greater than. I would like to change the color of any cell with a value greater than 30,000. And I'll set a green fill and click OK. Quite happily, those cells with a value greater than 30,000 change. But I do get that icon still in the corner. Now, rather than go to the icon this time, although it's perfectly fine, I'm going to come up to conditional formatting down to manage rules and edit it this way. Obviously this is a little bit of a longer winded way, but I wanted to show that the settings are here also. I have the option for all sales, for the totals, product category, order date. Once again, it had defaulted to selected sales. And in the data we've got, the pivot table I've got right now, that was wonderful. But we have to bear in mind that it may be that this pivot table is going to change. There might be new months added. Maybe not in this one, because I've got all 12, but in a different scenario. There may be different categories changing. So I have to think to the future and go, the cells that are selected is possibly not the best option. I want this. I'm going to click OK. It's not going to make a difference to this one, because it was good already. But as this pivot table changes, the conditional formatting rule now has the smarts to react to that. Thank you for watching this video on three frequently asked questions with pivot tables. I hope you found it useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.